Hey everyone, welcome to this next episode of your Daily Equation. I'll begin with a couple of uh, quick announcements. Uh, a number of you have uh, asked if I would do these sessions live. And here's the thing, I'd love to do these live. I love that engagement directly on the fly. The challenge is that when we've done tests, there's a sort of lag and asynchrony between you know the movement of the lips and the words that I'm actually saying. So it kind of looks like you're watching some kind of foreign film that's being dubbed. So it's kind of less than satisfying. So I don't know, let us know whether that would bother you or not. And I'm happy to try a live session if we want to give that a whirl. Also, a number of you asked if I would do some Q&A sessions. I am happy to do that. So send in your questions. Many of you put questions in the comments and we'll see. Maybe I'll do the Q&A live or maybe I'll extract you know, some of the more fruitful questions that are listed in the comments or that you send to me directly and I can address those in perhaps a series of sessions that will uh, be interlaced with the Daily Equation episodes that we have been creating. Okay, good. So today, I'm going to do something a little bit different. You know, you no doubt have noticed that I've grouped the early equations. They're all having to do with Einstein's special theory of relativity motivated by our first equation equals mc squared. How could you not begin a series called your daily equation without starting with e equals mc squared? And there are a handful of other equations in special relativity that I'm looking forward to discussing with you. But just to mix it up a little bit, today I'm going to do a different equation, a, a kind of simple equation that, um, I don't know, is sort of surprisingly um, mind-slapping in a way. It's a little bit, maybe it's even surprising that it's surprising, but it is one of those equations. Uh, you know, I just tried it out on my on my son, he thought it was kind of cool. It's an old one, many of you no doubt have seen this, but let's just take a quick look and see this little analysis for today's daily equation. So what is the equation that I have in mind? Let me bring up the iPad, good. So the, the equation is dead simple. It's simply this, right? It's one equals 0.99999999. And it just keeps on going with the nines. And the claim is that this is a, a true equation that we have here. And it is, it is surprising, right? I mean, when you, when you just look at that, many people would say, hey, you know, the thing that you have there on the right-hand side, yeah, it may go on forever. But the right-hand side is clearly always going to be less than when it gets close to one, ever closer to one, but it never quite reaches one. But the claim is that if you take those sort of three dots at the end seriously there and imagine this thing does go on forever, then that really is an equality. It really does equal one. Now, there are a number of ways of establishing this depending on the level of mathematical rigor that you'd like to use. My goal here is just to kind of give you a sense of, of how to show that it's true, and I'll leave it for the mathematicians among you to fill in all of the subtleties. But, you know, I'll, so I'll say two things about this. One is, you can approach this question by just writing down some finite versions of the infinite decimal expansion and seeing how they differ from one. So the difference of 0.9 from one, of course, is just one-tenth. If you were to go to 0.99, then the difference from one, of course, would be one one hundredth. And of course, you see the pattern. If you go to the nth decimal place, so you 0.999, a finite number, but n of these guys, then you'll differ from one by one over 10 to the nth power. And, you know, this is just formalizing what you already know by looking at the expression even naively, that the more nines you have, the closer you get to one. And you could formalize that a little bit. You could say, hey, you know, if X is equal to 0.999 and go on forever with that, if X itself were less than one, so if X were less than one, 
Then you say to yourself, well, there's some difference between one and X. Let's call that difference epsilon. Clearly it's gonna be pretty small if there is an X that is not equal to one. And you then recognize from what we have above that by choosing N sufficiently large, you can make the difference between one and the finite expression to be arbitrarily small. One over 10 to the N gets smaller and smaller as N gets bigger and bigger. So whatever epsilon there is, if it's a finite non-zero value, then you run into a contradiction because you just choose N large enough so that N large enough will ensure us that one minus X, whoops, sorry about that, one minus X, this guy over here will actually be less than epsilon because one minus X is just one over 10 to the N and make N large enough. You can make one over 10 to the N smaller than any finite value of epsilon. So that pretty much establishes right there that X has to be equal to one. There is no finite non-zero value of epsilon, which would be the difference between one and X. Good. Okay. That's sort of one way of establishing it, but that doesn't, I don't know, that just sort of formalizes this idea that 0.99999 gets closer and closer to one, it might still leave you feeling dissatisfied. And when I gave that little argument to my son just a little few minutes ago, he was a little dissatisfied with it, but he was satisfied with the following argument, which uh, is kind of a nice way of thinking about it. So let's play this game. So let's let X equal 0.999 and imagine this thing just keeps on going forever. Well, let's now multiply both sides by 10. So we get 10x equals, y'all know, multiply by 10. You just move the decimal over by one. So you get 9.99 and this thing just keeps on going forever. Good, that's nice because now let's do 10x minus x. And on the left-hand side, of course, 10x minus x is nine times x. And on the right-hand side, well, the 0.999 Subtract that out from 9.999, it just kills everything after the decimal point. So we get 9x equals 9, and lo and behold, right there, we have x equals 1. And that's kind of, I don't know, for many people that's psychologically maybe a little bit more convincing or satisfying than the previous argument. And there you have it. So you do have this equality that is today's equation that is 1.99999 and you just keep on going. Now, as I was saying, there's a way in which this is both surprising because you kind of stare at it and you, you think that it can't quite really be true, but we just showed that it is. But there's another way of thinking about it where it's more surprising that it is surprising. And what I mean by that is Nobody would blink an eye if I wrote down one third equals 0.3333 and so forth. Let those guys go on forever. That one is almost second nature to most of us. But now if I multiply both sides by three, well, three times a third is one and three times 0.3331 and so on is, is 0.9999 and so on. So from that perspective, the surprising equation at the top over here is nothing but this boring equation over here that nobody would take second notice of multiplied by three. Now you'd think that a boring equation, this one over here, would stay boring if you just multiplied both sides by three. In fact, you might say, well, if it's boring, then three times it is going to be three times as boring, right? But yet, Kind of surprisingly, you multiply it by three and you get an equation, the one that we started with, which is for most people, at least at first glance, kind of surprising. So this is just one of those interesting mathematical niceties, mathematical facts that you can try out on your, on your friends and your family, probably at the moment more on your family than your friends, although you can do it digitally, of course. And it is a, a kind of unexpected equality between two 
mathematical terms, each of which is straightforward in its own right, and it's just unexpectedly that they are equal to each other, but as we just saw, very easy to establish, at least at the level of convincingness and rigor, if convincingness is a word that uh, we're doing here. Okay, so that's just a little bite-sized version of your daily equation, and we'll take it up again tomorrow with another equation. Again, as I do these, I kind of figure out what I'm going to do on the fly, so I'm not precisely sure what I'm going to do. But again, send in your suggestions, keeping track of those. I, in fact, this one, I should say, really did come from a suggestion from one of you guys. So I appreciate, I forget who it was, but you know, I was familiar with the, this curiosity, but someone brought it up as something that would be worth a moment of explanation. So thank you very much. And also, if you, um, if you want to do some live Q&A, just send in your questions and I'm happy to go through them and either answer them in one of these sessions or in a live Q&A itself. Okay, that's all for today. That is your daily equation. Look forward to seeing you next time. Until then, take care.